All right, going to do a very detailed study on this passage of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, um, specifically verse 2. And uh, this, there's a lot of arguing and debating going back and forth over what the day of Christ is, how does this whole thing work out. And uh, so I want to do a study on this. And uh, I'm going to take my time here and go over this thing very thoroughly. Um, it's kind of interesting because I've seen this thing where the posties uh, years ago, I've been in this pre-trib, post-trib, mid-trib, mid-wrath, whatever. I've been in the thing for years and years and years. Uh, it's even before the Bible version issue, uh, you know, coming out on stuff on that. And so I'm very, very familiar with the arguments. And uh, for the most part, the posties stuck with Matthew 24 for years, and they really didn't go to Second, excuse me, Second Thessalonians chapter two. That's only a very recent thing. And uh, the reason for that is because uh, Matthew chapter 24 is so easy to, easy to debunk that that somehow is the rapture and stuff like this. Um, Matthew chapter 24 is before Jesus dies on the cross. He's not writing to Christians. He says, let them which be in Judea. You know, the Antichrist sits himself up in the holy place. Uh, we don't have a holy place as Christians today. Our, our bodies are the temple of God. Um, there's just so many things. Pray that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. Uh, you know, where's the resurrection of dead saints in Matthew chapter 24? It's not there. I mean, there's just so many things. And so they, they get this thing of Matthew 24, verse 29, immediately after the tribulation. And they go, see, boom, that's it. Well, anybody just looks it up, you, you look and you go, they're not even quoting the whole verse. Tribulation of those days. And then, it's, and then they see the sign of the Son of Man coming. It's like, I don't think Christians were supposed to look for signs. You know, but the Jews seek after signs. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. So it's like they're kind of, they still try to talk about Matthew 24, but they're really trying to lean very heavily on 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And they say, well, see, the Antichrist has to show up before we leave, so therefore we'll be there for the first three and a half years or whatever else. Um, and unfortunately, some of the brethren that have claimed to be pre-trib are also starting to kind of falter in this passage here and uh, starting to make some problems. And uh, it's causing a lot of doubt and confusion. So I'm going to show you what I believe this passage teaches. And, you know, you can agree to disagree or disagree with me entirely or whatever else. But we need to compare not just what's going on with 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, but also what did Paul write in the first letter to the Thessalonians. I'm going to show you why I said that here and as we continue in this little study here. But uh, and we also have to compare it to what the actual events are in the book of Revelation. Okay, so with those little ground rule ground rules set up there, let's look here. Second Thessalonians chapter two, beginning in verse one. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto Him. Okay, now what's that talking about? Let's just stop there. Let's before we go any further. What is this talking about? Our gathering together unto Him. Our it's the body of Christ gathering together. He's referring to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 through 18. Obviously, you know, those that are alive go up first, we, and then the dead, excuse me, the dead go up first, excuse me, and then those which are alive go up after that. All right, that's what he's talking about, our gathering together unto him. Look at verse 2. That ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Here's where the big debate comes in at. Okay, Now we need to look at three very important parts of this verse 2. Okay, First we have point number one. They are shaken in mind, and I'll just say it this way, I'll just write down below it, also troubled. Okay? Now, whatever side you want to take, whatever part of the argument or whatever you want to say, we can all agree that they are shaken in mind and troubled. Correct? Whatever these false letters were, whatever these false... Uh, prophets were sending to the Thessalonian believers telling them whatever the day of Christ is at hand thing 
We'll get into that here in just a minute. But whatever was going on, it was shaking them up, shaken in mind, and they were troubled. We can all agree to that, obviously. Okay, the second point we need to look at here in this is the key phrase here in verse 2, and that is, here's where a lot of the big debate comes in, and that is the day of Christ. Okay? Now, we're gonna, this is where a lot of the argument comes in at. What is the day of Christ? What is that a reference to? We're going to talk about that as we continue here. But then the third part here, the th third little phrase, key words here that are very, very important is the final two words there. And that is the words at hand. All right. Now, this is the, the, where the, all the debate comes in. They're bothered, they're troubled, shaken in mind and troubled here. They're upset by what these letters are saying and that the day of Christ there is what these letters, these false prophets are writing about the day of Christ. And they're saying that this day of Christ is at hand. And this here, what, what was written, is shaking them in mind and they're troubled by it. Can we agree on that? I think so. We can certainly do that. So what's the big debate? What is the day of Christ? Now, uh, if you look at uh, the scriptures and you compare scripture with scripture, uh, certainly the day of Christ is normally a reference to the rapture. Okay? And it would seem to make sense that that would be what it's talking about because in verse 1, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him. Okay, then he goes on to talk about the day of Christ. All right, um, and I'm not going to go over all the references to the day of Christ, but you can look those, those up. And it's all about, you know, going that gathering together there, the day of Christ, certainly. Okay, but here's the point. What is the context of what's going on here? You had somebody else writing and saying the day of Christ is at hand. Okay, now what are they exactly talking about here? And here's where my issue with this thing coming in, where you say, well, it has to be the rapture because day of Christ and other passages, it, it's always the rapture, so it has to be the rapture here. Okay. Why would they be troubled, shaken in mind and troubled, if they were thinking the day of Christ was at hand? See, that's why I'm looking at this thing and going, okay, that doesn't make any sense. I mean... 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 18, Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 11, Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. How can this be the rapture? They're saying, oh, the rapture is at hand. See? And it's shaking them up in mind. They're shaking in mind and troubled. How does that make any sense? It doesn't. It's a comfort to them. And the Thessalonian believers were not some kind of worldly like the Corinthians or something where they would be upset that the rapture was coming and they don't want to leave the world or something like that. That's not what's going on there. You don't see Paul rebuking them and saying, you're worldly. That's why you're shaken in mind and troubled because you don't want the rapture to happen. And I've seen professing Christians that are like that too, by the way. So I have seen that. Where I, I hope it's not the rapture soon. Boy, I, I just don't want to... Yeah, you know, there's so many things I wanted to do. It's like, <laughs> okay, you know, if you're right with the Lord, you're wanting the day of Christ, you know, being the rapture, okay? So what's going on here? Well, what a lot of the brethren do is they say, well, the day of Christ, because it appears elsewhere as the rapture, then we have to make it into the rapture in this passage. I'm going to show you that that's false. They say, and they'll say, you know, the new versions... Uh, we'll change Day of Christ to Day of the Lord, so it can't be Day of the Lord because then we'd be lining up with the new versions. Well, I'm not for the new versions, obviously. Uh, King James Video Ministries, I think I stick by one version. Um, it's not the new ones either. <laughs> um, I, I, you don't have to change the, the text of Scripture to try and match the right doctrine or whatever else. Um, and I'm, by me saying I believe it's the Day of the Lord, uh, that reference there, this unique reference in verse 2, 
That doesn't mean I support the new versions. Okay, so please don't put that on me. That is kind of ridiculous. All right, but see, here's the whole thing. I have Ruckman's uh, study Bible, and I was going to bring it up. I forgot to. But if you have it, you can look this up as well. He says the day of Christ has to be the rapture. So therefore, he has to change this right here. See, if you make this into the rapture, you have a problem here and you have a problem here. All right? That's why I'm saying it can't work in context. If this is the rapture, they're not going to be shaken in mind and troubled. And it doesn't make any sense either that it's at hand. Okay? And what Ruckman does in his commentary, and I love Dr. Ruckman, but I don't agree with him in a lot of different areas. And he says, at hand means already happened. Now, I can tell you, looked up all the references in Scripture and just even common sense, if something is at hand, it doesn't mean already past. Never once is it ever used that way. If I tell you the rapture is at hand, you're thinking, yeah, I think it is. It's going to be happening soon. You're not going to go, oh no, we missed it. That doesn't make any sense. I mean, you look at prophetic type of stuff that's going on and things, and um, you know, I had a brother say, you know, that well, there are no signs that precede the rapture. Oh, that's not true either. I mean, First Timothy. Let me just uh, go here quick. First Timothy chapter four. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly. Uh, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, commanding to abstain from meats. Goes on. Second Timothy chapter three. This know also that in the last times or last days perilous times shall come. And it goes down through. Uh, there's a lot of signs that precede the rapture. All right. There's a lot of things that are happening. And Paul gives us signs that we can look for to see these things to say, okay, we're in the last days. The rapture is going to happen at some point in time. So I had to add that in there too. So you can't say, well, uh, you know, the rapture there, you know, um, that they, they were they were thinking rapture, but they're thinking it's already passed. No, they weren't. No, they weren't. What are they thinking? They're thinking this is the second coming. All right. Now, maybe they were confused about it because somebody else had written this letter and things. You see that there, there in verse 2. And they were trying to say that the day of Christ is, they changed, They used the term day of Christ. And so Paul used it you know, to kind of correct them or something. I don't know. But it does not make any sense at all. Why, if this is the rapture, why would they be shaken in mind and troubled about it being at hand? It doesn't make any sense. So if you make this into the rapture, then you have to change this down here, all right? saying that it's already passed. It's not already passed. It's at hand. That means an event that's getting very close. All right? But now let's look back at 1 Thessalonians. But let me show you a key scripture. Look there at your Bible, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. We'll read down through. We'll read to, to uh, verse 5. Verse 3, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. All right? Now, let's stop there for just a minute. We're going to, verse 5 is a key scripture here in this whole debate thing. But look at verse 3. As at the day of Christ is at hand, verse 2, verse 3, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. What day? Well, what he just referred to there in verse 2, the day of Christ. All right? So if you want to make that the rapture, then the rapture is not going to happen until there's a falling away. And don't tell me it's the rapture, it's a catching up or something. No, it's, it's nonsense. It's an apostasy. It's a falling away from the truth. Again, compare it to uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4, 2 Timothy chapter 3. There's obviously a very serious departing there from the faith and things like this. Okay, This day here, that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, apostasy, and that man of sin be revealed. Then that means that Christians would be here to see the Antichrist. That's a problem. Because if we're here to see the Antichrist, Mark of the Beast thing gets kicked in, you know, and don't say, oh, it's halfway through or something. Again, that's nonsense. Uh, you know, there's a whole lot of things going on here in this passage, and I'm going to have to do other videos on it.
But the whole point is, Christians are not on the earth when the Antichrist is revealed. All you got to do is just turn to Revelation chapter 5. There are Christians in there, the 24 elders. John's up there, great multitude of, of angels. The redeemed, redeemed saints in heaven before the first seal is opened. You know? So again, it's more deception on that thing. But he says that this day is not going to come except there come a falling away first and the man of sin be revealed. And he goes on to describe about the thing of there in verse 4, which is, you know, verse 4 is talking about halfway through the time of Jacob's trouble when he causes the sacrifice and oblation to cease. All right? Sets himself up in the temple to be worshipped as God. All right? So the, verse 4 is talking about halfway through the time of Jacob's trouble. All right? And like I said, there's a bunch more things I want to say on that. But let's stick with the point here. This day that Paul is referring to in verse 3 cannot be the rapture. How do you know? Because we're up in heaven before the Antichrist is revealed. So what day is Paul referring to here? He is saying, verse 2, the day of Christ, verse 3, that day will not come except there come falling away first and the man of sin be revealed. He's talking about the second coming. The day of the Lord begins with the second coming where Jesus physically comes down to the earth with his saints, Revelation chapter 19, and then he sets up that day, the thousand year period. One day is with the Lord is a thousand years. Boom. That's what's going on there. All right? He's clearly referring to that. But let me show you the real proof here. Verse 5, Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. There's a key scripture right there. When he was with them before, he told them these things. Now, you say, well, that was just in person. He just was talking to him in person. Well, then why put that in the scriptures? No, verse 5 is put there specifically to turn us as Bible-believing Christians today back to 1 Thessalonians. Let's go there. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 through 18 in chapter 4, you have the rapture. Chapter 5, verse 1. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of Christ... Is that what it says? No, it says, uh, The day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. What is the day of Christ in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 2? Remember you not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? The day of Christ is the day of the Lord in this unique context here. How do you know? Compare Scripture with Scripture, brethren. It makes perfect sense. They're thinking day of Christ here being the day of the Lord, the second coming. This is not the rapture. It is the, I'll just write it here, the second coming. Now, if I told you the rapture is at hand, would you be shaken in mind and troubled? No. If I told you the second coming is at hand, would that shake you up in mind, shaken in mind and troubled? Would that be your feeling, your attitude? Yeah, it would be. Of course it would be. Because you see, all of a sudden you start thinking to yourself, am I going to be able to buy or sell? You mean to tell me I'm going to be facing the judgment of Almighty God? I mean, how many times have you as a Christian been spared from horrible storms that have come through the area and, and all kinds of other stuff that's happened on the lost, wicked people out there and you've seen God's hand of mercy upon you, upon your household, and spared you from that thing? But it's going away. You're going to go through the same judgment as all the lost people out there. Shaking mind and troubled. If you have any common sense, you would be. See? See? That's what's going on here. This cannot be the rapture in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 2. It can't be the rapture. You have to mess with this. You have to say at hand means already past. It doesn't. It never has, nor will it ever. It's the second coming. How do you know? 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 5 takes you back to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 2, and it says the day of the Lord. Paul is writing, and he says day of Christ and uses it, this term here, to refer to the day of the Lord. Let's keep reading. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 3. For when they, 
And I've told, talked about this in multiple studies. There is major distinction here. Ye, you, yourselves, us, you know, and then they, themselves, and things like this. You know, they, them, they, others, they, not themselves, excuse me. For when they shall say, peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Somebody's escaping. You say, well, that's, that's uh, halfway through the, the time of Jacob's trouble there, you know, when the man of sin, you know, comes about and everything else, and then the, then the wrath starts, and so, you know, you escape. Um, I can tell you right now, a lot of Christians are not going to escape. If that's the case, if the body of Christ goes through the first three and a half years of the thing, there would be Christians that would be taking the mark of the beast. Of course there would. Would they escape? No, they wouldn't. And God would be forced into a situation where he's going to have to say, hey, you're sealed until the day of redemption, but if any man takes the mark and worships the beast in his image, seems to drink of the wine of the wrath of God. Hmm, what do I do with that? Revelation 14, verses 9 through 11. You make God into a liar with this whole system. wonder who would want to make God into a liar. Hmm, it's interesting. Verse 4, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 4. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day, what day? The day of the Lord, should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Oh, there's no signs that precede the rapture. That is not true. I've heard that thing for years and years and years. I don't know if I might have repeated it different times, but it's not true. 1 Thessalonians 4, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, both give you all kinds of signs that you can look for. And there's other ones too. You know, signs that happen before the rapture. We're to watch and be sober. Verse 7, For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with Him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together, and edify one another, even as also ye do." Are my words comforting to you as a Christian right now? You're not going to have to look for that second coming. You're not going to be going into a time of God's wrath. And don't let anybody fool you. Oh, the wrath starts halfway through. That's stupid. Okay? The Antichrist, he shows up at the beginning. You take his mark, you get God's wrath. Don't give me this nonsense. I mean, you know, read Revelation chapter 6 and tell me that there's no wrath in that. You know? War, famine, death, hell, all this stuff. And that's not God's wrath, you know. <laughs> and, you know, a lot of these posties are getting so desperate that they actually literally have to go in there and say, Revelation chapter 6 is what man is doing to the saved. And then after that, the trumpets and the vials and things, then you have, you know, Re Revelation chapter 7 on, then that's what God does to man. Ridiculous nonsense. I mean, they can't even read English, all right? Jesus is the one that's opening the seals. It's not man doing things to save people. The Lord Jesus Christ is the one who's found worthy to open the seals. So, what's going on here? This thing right here, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 2, is a one reference, and I will say, all the other references to the day of the Lord Jesus Christ or the day of Christ or things like that, those references are about the rapture, certainly. But in this unique context here, it does not make any sense at all that the day of Christ is the rapture in verse 2 of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. It can't be. It can't be the rapture. If it's the rapture, they would not be shaken in mind or troubled, right? And... If you want to try to make it into the rapture, then you can. You have to change this in order for this to work. The only way for the verse to make sense to you is if the day of Christ is referring back to the first letter he wrote, where in chapter 5, verse 2, it says the day of the Lord. Paul is referring to the day of the Lord. All right? So, um, 
I'm trying to think if I should get into any of the other points on this Second Thessalonians chapter two because this is the this is like the like I said the posties are starting to try to abandon ship on Matthew chapter twenty four because uh, there's you can pin them so easily on that and now they're going to try to come over to where instructions are actually for Christians here in Second Thessalonians chapter two and they're trying to jump ship in Matthew twenty four come over here to Second Thessalonians chapter two to prove that the body of Christ has to go into this time period. <laughs> It's, it's ridiculous. So hopefully I've cleared that thing up with you. Um, I'm not trying to, to justify the new version changes and it should say day of the Lord and not day of Christ. God writes his word uh, very specifically for, you know, different reasons. And I'll tell you right now, one of the reasons the Lord will write things that are somewhat confusing uh, into his word is because if you want to hang yourself, he'll provide the rope. I said that in other studies. Uh, if you want to find contradictions in the Word of God, you'll find them. If you want to find justification to basically damn yourself to hell, you'll you'll be able to find it. All right. Uh, the Bible is a spiritual book, and you cannot uh, really understand it unless you come to it with a believing heart. And um, you have to compare Scripture with Scripture. And again, you know, let me just say this. All right, if you want to go to Revelation chapter 5, just trying to think of the different points I wanted to say here about this. Revelation chapter 4, you have John going up in verse, well, being hearing, you know, that he's to come up in verse 1. In verse 2, he comes up, and then he sees 24 elders there in uh, verse 4. You know, who are these 24 elders? Well, you come over to chapter 5. Verse 9, uh, And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. All right. So you have at least 25 saved people in heaven before the time of Jacob's trouble gets started. If you want to call it the Great Tribulation, we'll just go with that for a minute here to prove my point. Okay. There are at least 25 people there, clearly Christians in heaven, physically in heaven and you say well the 24 elders are, are the uh, souls it doesn't say that revelation chapter 6 you see souls under the altar and it clean, plainly says that they are souls john does not look at the 24 elders and say uh, i saw the souls of 24 elders he's saying i see 24 elders if anybody tells you well they're souls and think they're lying to you just look at the scriptures read the scriptures but look at verse 10 Revelation chapter 5, verse 10, And uh, hast made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Promise for Christians. Verse 11, And I beheld, and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beasts and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000, and thousands of thousands. Okay? And in the resurrection, we are as the angels of God. The Bible also says, It doth not yet appear, but when... Um, but, uh, uh, says, uh, Excuse me, let me go over to First John... I want to get the quotation exactly right here. 1 John chapter 3, verse 1, Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Okay, so you have in the Old Testament, Sons of God, you can read the book of Job. Sons of God are references to angels. Okay, Now, we are the sons of God now. We're angels. We appear like you know, unto angels in heaven when we go up. So, clearly saved people physically present in heaven before the first seal is open. Now, why am I bringing that point up? Because you see it lines up with what's going on over in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. You see? 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Not sure if I want to get into this right now in this uh, video here, but uh, um, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 5. Remember, remember you not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. We discussed that already. Verse 6. And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. 
And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders. I'm probably just going to do that in another study, um, because it's getting into a whole other thing than, what is this, this he who now letteth will let? Okay, that's another issue there. Um, you know, it's something I, I need to discuss, because... Uh, there's there's a lot of brethren coming out and they're coming up with these different theories and stuff like this and quite frankly they they just don't work. I'm not trying to say that out of pride and say I'm the only one that's right or something like that. Uh, we need to search the scriptures and we need to compare scripture with scripture. And uh, you know that's what I've tried to do in this study here. Um, Second Thessalonians chapter two verse two just does not make sense if you try to make this into the rapture. It doesn't line up with what Paul wrote to them in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 2, where it clearly says the day of the Lord. Um, so I think I'm going to end this here, and I'm probably going to do a little a part two about who is this he who now letteth will let. Okay? So uh, pray about it. Search the scriptures and uh, compare scripture with scripture. Okay? That's going to be it. Thank you for watching.